magic in the air. Hey guys, Megan Barker here from Jammin' and Jammies. If you don't know what Jammies is, it is a live show that happens here in Nashville every week featuring hit songwriters and rising artists in their pajamas. It's a real fun time. And while we're all sitting at home a little more, we are sitting down with our favorite artists and songwriters and kind of peeking behind the curtain and picking their brain. So today we are lucky enough to have Mr. Mitch Rosell, who is a jammy veteran at this point. Mitch is an artist and songwriter taking Nashville by storm. He first broke onto the scene when he wrote Garth Brooks' smash hit, Ask Me How I Know. And he followed it up with another Garth hit, uh, Dive Bar, which of course was a duet with Blake Shelton. And he's got the latest Garth single, That's What Cowboys Do. I'm sensing a theme here, but Mitch is an artist himself, and he's in the studio right, right now working on a project, but we're so excited to have him. So let's welcome him. Hey, Mitch, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for being here. Um, do you want to just start by telling everyone who you are, where you're from, how you got into music? Sure. Yeah. Um, my name is Mitch Rosell. I'm from, I always say East Tennessee. People always ask uh, you know, where in East Tennessee and all of it, I guess. Um, a lot of my family's in the Chattanooga area, North Georgia, a little bit. Um, when my dad was alive, he lived in a little town called Teleco Plains, and then his mom lived in Bristol. So I, I got the whole side of the state there growing up. Okay. Um, so yeah, and I've been, I've been, I guess I, I was a late bloomer playing music. I didn't pick up guitar till I was almost 18. So right before college, and I moved here right after I graduated, 15 days after, and been hard at it trying to make this thing happen. So. Yeah. Awesome. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your songwriting process and I guess how the whole Garth thing came to be and, and was Garth your first cut? Yeah, so I'll start with the songwriting process. Um, for me, it's, it's kind of all over the board, just depending on the day, but I would say my most common approach is, for me, I like to have an idea. You know, if I have a great idea that I can sink my teeth into, I can definitely get rolling on something, you know, um, the melody will start to come and then the lyric will start to come. And, uh, without an idea, I've written that way many times, but it always feels like it's a less natural process for me that way. Uh, and as far as Garth, um, that whole thing happened. It was the craziest, craziest thing in the world. I never imagined or dreamed that it would, it would ever, you mean like anything like this would ever happen to me, but, um, I sent him an email when he was cutting for Manning his machine, it was his first record back. And I just sent him an email. His pitch email was uh, distributed throughout Nashville pretty heavily. And he was listening to every song. I didn't know that. I just thought wow. this is going to go in some black hole and never be seen again. But I sent it. You never met him before. No, I'd never met him. I just sent him four songs blindly. And two weeks later, I got a message back from Garth Brooks. It was about three paragraphs long saying some of the nicest stuff you could ever imagine and just it, it started from there and it became a you know a friendship over time and then um he's just taught me so much as a human and as a as an artist and he's just a he's been an amazing mentor and uh yes uh my first cut was garth brooks so wow okay it's just, all downhill <laughs> yeah that's kind of hard to beat but can you just take us on a personal note to that moment when you got a response two weeks later i mean I guess I've gotten responses quicker and later than that, but I bet you weren't expecting a response. If you're going to get a response generally, it's probably within like three days or something. Right. So can you take us to that moment? Like who did you call? What did you do? So I was actually, I woke up that morning to go to a, a meeting with Jody Williams. He was at BMI at the time. And Jody's always been such a champion of mine. If it wasn't for him, I, I don't know that I would have lasted in town because because I had a hard time, you know, I had a really hard time. I was writing stuff that really wasn't popular. And, uh, but Jody believed in me. He, he knew that the, the town goes in cycles, you know, it goes through friends. And he said, man, you just need to keep doing what you're doing and it's going to come around to you. And so he was such a huge kind of encourager for me. And I had a meeting with him that morning and I just, like I always did, you know, woke up, I would always check my email before I would leave the house, just to see if there's anything I needed to respond to. And, just deleting junk mails, uh, messages. And then I see this email from Garth Brooks and I'm reading it. And as I'm reading it, I swear, I feel like I'm levitating off the floor. <laughs> like, it's like becoming, cause at the end he put, he put love, respect G and like, you know what that G means. It means it's him. It's not his assistant or something that's listening to the song. It's him. And I'm like, this is not real. I'm dreaming or this has to be a dream. And I like slapping myself, like wake up. Like there's no way this is real. And wow. 
I, I, I never woke up and I still hadn't. It's been a, it's been a dream for sure and a fantasy oh. that I'm living. So Unbelievable. Okay, yeah. well, you said that you struggled before this all happened, and I'm sure all songwriters in Nashville can relate to that. Can you take us inside the beginning, like pre-Garth, what your journey was like and some of that? Sure, yeah. Um, for me, it was, you know, I grew up on a 90s country um, and a lot of the older stuff and classic rock and just a lot of really, um, you know, just lyric, heavy stories, hooks, um, great melodies, and that's what I loved, you know. And so when I came to Nashville, um, you know, we were we were starting to go into this new trend and phase where the lyric was kind of um, just wasn't as crafted, I guess, and it wasn't as um, there there wasn't a lot of weight to a lot of songs. You know, most songs were just kind of surface level, more about the beat and the, you know, you know what I'm talking about, the whole, the whole phase. And it's still, it still have some of that going on and, and that's cool. But the, the thing that sucks about trends in music sometimes is that instead of that being a thing while also letting other things be a part of it, it like completely envelops the whole genre. You know what I mean? And it happens in every genre. It just, it's like, if you're not doing that, then you're not getting heard, you know? And so it was really hard because I, I was just trying to be a songwriter when I moved to town. I didn't want to be an artist. And I was writing all this stuff like, you know, like all those Garth records that I grew up loving and listening to. And it just was not what was being cut at the time. So I would have meetings and I mean, I could tell some people genuinely liked what they were hearing and they thought I had some potential and all that. But I, I just know that they probably had to have been going, yeah, I just, what, what am I going to do with this? You know, like, who's right. going to this stuff right now <laughs> so it was pretty tough I mean I went years trying to get some traction and just couldn't couldn't seem to, to get a, a break you know um until did that you, did you try to conform and, and write songs like what they were asking for uh I went through a sh really short phase and when I say really short I mean like less than a few months where it wasn't necessarily that I made the, the decision to do that as much as it was, I got put in the room with guys who were already doing that. Yeah. And so I kind of, I was like, I'm the young guy, the new guy. I can't really like put my foot down and be like, we're not writing this kind of thing today. I want to write this. So I, I had a few of those songs that ended up being in my catalog that I, they weren't my favorite, you know, just because, and it's not knocking that style. The truth is, is like, I'm not good at that. You know, it's not about what's, if that's, if that sucks or not, it's, that's, it's music. You know what I mean? It's all subjective. So it just was more of like, okay, they do that really well. Like that, the people who wrote, wrote those hits, the whatever, the bro country thing, like they, that's what they do really well. Right. I don't, I can't do that. Right. So I could, if I try to pretend, it's just going to end up sounding like a watered down version of what they're great at, you know? So yeah. I learned pretty quick that that was not going to be number one, what made me feel satisfied and happy. And also it wasn't going to be very good songs because I just I wasn't in it you know yeah I think that's insightful I think you need to know what you're good at and what you're not so good at what other people are good at sure. um, so you got your first cut before you had a publishing deal right so can you take us inside like what happened and how you signed a deal and all of that yeah I did I had my first cut before I had a publishing deal um and even at that time still what I was writing was not really the thing, you know, um, yeah. Garth just happened to be one of the few artists that wasn't, um, wasn't as, um, kind of in the Nashville mix. He was kind of his own thing. And he obviously is, is came up, you know, in the time that I grew up listening to. So it kind of was a natural match. You know, I was writing stuff that I think he, he, that caught his ear. Um, and so, uh, so I got this cut and, I, I was told, you know, he told me it was a hit and that he wanted to single it. And when the record, right before the record came out, I had heard that they were pushing for it to be the first single, but then that didn't work out. And I was like, oh man, you know, I wonder if it's, you know, in this business, like you don't count, you don't have a cut until it's on the Walmart shelf. Yeah. That's the first thing. You don't have a single until it's on the radio. Like, I don't care what you're told. You just always got to keep your expectations in check because it's easy to get very disappointed if you don't. Yeah. Well, I was kind of like trying to almost 
over under expectation, you know, like be like, oh, it's not going to be a single day, you know, it's not going to be. So, so that way I wouldn't get, yeah, be devastated, you know, if it wasn't. Um, but then second single, uh, here he came with it and it started to climb the chart slowly but surely and it just started researching better and better and, um, you know, you could feel it bubbling and then, and then it started getting up there in like the top 20 and then it really started catching some steam and, wow. and when it got to the top 10, it just, it just was taken off and it was around that time that I had met my now publisher and I had been meeting with a lot of publishers and for me, I, I was really, um, wanting to find something that was bigger than just that one song and the reason they wanted me, you know, like I wanted to find a, a publishing home where people believed in me and, uh, where I'm at now, she, uh, she told me straight up, she was like, she was like, if you want to do a deal with that song involved, we'll do it. She said, if you don't, I just believe in you. I think you're great. I think you're the person, I, type of person I want to work with. And that sold me right there. I was like, you know, that's, that's what I want to hear. That's what I want to know. And so she's stuck to that. She's kept to her word and, uh, uh Ree Guy is her name. She owns Ren Song and everybody over there has just been so supportive of me as an artist. Um, they've put their money with their mouth. That's for sure. They're, they're awesome. That's amazing. It's kind of like a dream scenario. Yeah. I have to know, um, so after having a little taste of success, did everybody come knocking on your door wanting your publishing and to be a part of the Mitch Rosell brand? Um, not everybody, but it definitely, you know, it definitely changed some things, you know, yeah. other writers maybe that, that, wanted to write more yeah. things like okay. that um and just people that i had never that never really given me the time of day that were all of a sudden being really nice and yeah and, you know like every time i'd see them out they want to talk to me for 20 minutes and i'm like you know i mean and, and that's it might have been pure intent but it does make you wonder you know if it but that's just that's just part of the business you know you know how it is i mean it's it's such a it's a business at the end of the day. If you forget it's a business, it's going to remind you real quick. Yeah, so. absolutely. Is there anything you wish you'd known when you first got to town that you know now? Uh, Probably a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there, there's so many things. I mean, I think that for me, this wasn't as big a deal, um, but I think something I, I tell people now that want to do it because it, it looks so glamorous with the way like social media has made the music business so visible. There's not, there's not money in it. Like people think there is like, you can make a lot of money if you get to that top level of whatever it is, but there's not really much of a middle class anymore in this business. Like you're either starving or you're, you're doing okay. Yeah. Um, so that part of it, I think is, uh, is really good information for people who want to do this. If you, if you, and that's not to discourage you from doing it. It's more to weed out the ones who, if you're coming for the money or the fame, you may want to stay home because it's probably going to eat you alive. But if, if you're afflicted with it and you know, it's where you're supposed to be, then I think, you know, you should definitely come do it. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if, I mean, there's so many things that I wish I had known. Um, maybe, maybe just the generality of it's a business, you know, it really is a business. It's not, it's not as creatively thriving as, as you might think it is. It's, it can be really rough, the business side of it, for sure. Yeah, I think it's, it's tough. You really have to be creative and business-minded if you want to yep. be in Nashville. Unfortunately, it's, you kind of learn as you go. So, absolutely. Um, go ahead. No, I was just saying absolutely. I was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, what, do you have any tips for... I guess people that are already co-writing and people maybe that are brand new, like co-writing tips in general, I guess, how to be creative with other people. Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously the obvious one is just listen more than you talk a lot of times. Um, I think every personality is different. So my advice might not fit everybody else. I think some general advice would be to, uh, to not get discouraged. If you, if you write with a hit songwriter and it just doesn't vibe, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you or that you're not good or whatever. It just, it's weird. I mean, I've got guys that I've written with, with guys who are my buddies and they've written, you know, 10 number ones. And for whatever reason, we just don't vibe. You know what I mean? We don't, 
we get in a room and it just doesn't, it doesn't really come out, you know, and that's just, yeah. that's part of creativity. You know, some people, they just click like that and some people don't. And then there's other people who haven't written a single hit, a single cut, whatever. And I just, every time I write with them, I'm like, man, I love this. I love this. I love, you know, it's just, it doesn't matter all yeah. the hits and the accolades. It's not a measuring stick for how good you are. It's oh. all it is. <laughs> Yes. That's awesome. That has not happened yet. I've done so many of these. Oh, that's so awesome. I love it. That's <laughs> um, glad it happened on mine. Blooper reel. I love it. I love it. Sorry. No, it's all good. I love it. Um <laughs> oh yeah, I would just say that. I mean I would say just just don't don't let that become um a measuring stick, you know? Yeah. Um there's plenty of people in this town, including yourself. You may not have a big cut yet or a big hit. You, you're talented. I mean, you, it's just a matter of getting your breaking and the timing, you know, it's not like there's so many people so much better. It's, that's not it. It's just, you know, it's a process. So that's what I would say. Oh, round two. All right. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to throw her in this room real quick. Hold on. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that's, <awesome. laughs> that's hilarious. Oh my God. Okay. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Oh um, yeah. Okay. Where was I? Um, <laughs> I, I really, I really do appreciate those words of advice. You know, I think there are, I guess everybody in Nashville has, it, eventually you get to a point where you do get to write with a, with a big writer, you know, somebody you're excited to write with and maybe it doesn't go the way you thought it would. Um, you know, and do you think that maybe some, obviously sometimes you just don't vibe with somebody, but do you think that maybe sometimes you could have a bad first write and maybe it'll get better? What do you, what do you think about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's happened to me. Yeah. Uh, and then you also, you know, you got to keep in mind that, I mean, stylistically that can be yeah. a huge, like, especially some of the, some of the older, more veteran writers, a lot of those, like, it's really hit or miss for me because unfortunately a lot of times what you run into is if, if you are an actual songwriter and you actually have want to have input and, and you're actually contributing to the right, they might be so used to writing with some artists that aren't that way, you know, and, and they kind of just have to do everything for them or whatever. And so you get in the room and they're used to having it their way and you're trying to input your creative um, value, whatever it is that you're bringing. And I've had rights with veteran guys that, that I, I'm a huge fan of their stuff, but I'll never write with them again because two of them will get in a room and they'll just, they'll just gang up on you and everything that they say, they'll agree with each other. So it overrides what you, and it's just like, that's, I don't care how many hits you have. That's not what I'm trying to do. You know, like we need to collaborate and find a way to make something unique here. And, and that's just not, in my opinion, the way to do it. Um, so definitely don't get caught up in the, you know, just cause a guy has a bunch of hits that they're, yeah. you know, that there's something's wrong with you if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, you know, and, and also there's, there's guys in town that, you know, just the reality, there's guys and girls in town that maybe not be the greatest songwriter, but just having to be in the rooms when these hits were written, you know, you just never know what you're, what you're getting into the room with. So like, just, just try to make sure you keep yourself level and write like you would if it was anybody else, you know, and that's, that's easier said than done. But um, it really is true that, that it's not a measuring stick for how good you are, you know? Yeah, I really love your honesty and your down to earthness. You've got it seems like you've got it all figured out and I'm sure you don't, but this is really valuable stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They're, uh, they're lining up to get all the info from me. All the <laughs> figured out stuff I have. <laughs> you, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Can you take us behind the scenes of what it was like to go on tour with Gar? Yeah. Um, amazing. I mean, just from bottom to top, amazing. Just all the people on the tour, the crew, the band, um, everything about it was an experience that I can't even really put into words. It was just such a, it was euphoric, you know, it was like, um, the crowds were amazing. You know, they're, they're the, they're people that are a fan of his music. And if you're a fan of Garth music, then, you know, you're a fan of real, you know, real shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I knew going out there every night, they didn't know me from Adam. I got three to four acoustic songs, but I knew, I knew that the type of stuff I like to write 
was, was in their wheelhouse. I just had to get them. I just had to pull them in. You know, I had to get them where they would listen to me long enough. And I loved that, that tour because it taught me so much. I got to experience so much. I got to see so many places. And I got to see and feel and touch and hold that conviction I'd had in my heart for 10 years, knowing that it would work if I just had a chance, you know. And I saw it every night. I mean, standing ovations, the whole thing. And it was like, it was just a culmination of all the hard work, all the thousands of gigs I'd played, you know, just the songwriting, the throwing away notebooks of songs and starting over and writing better stuff, challenging myself, you know, writing with better writers, learning from them. And just the culmination of all that to, to those moments where it really, I could see it working in front of my eyes was really, really special. And it's something I'll never forget for sure. Living the dream. That's amazing. <laughs> You're making me like want to hang on. I'm trying not to tear up. It's such a beautiful description. Well, thank you. Um, oh, it sounds so good. Okay. You, <laughs> I looked at your website and you were supposed to be headed to Vegas this week, right? Yeah. I need to update all my, cause it was such in limbo and I forgot that show was on there, but yeah. I've got a lot of shows. I had a lot of shows this summer that were booked that I just hadn't announced yet. Um, and then right before I, I actually had a graphic that we were releasing with all the cities. And it was like oh. a few days bef uh, after all this stuff started happening that I was going to put it out there. And I was like, well, I better hold on to this, I guess. So yeah, we were going to be really, really busy this year. Um, but it's all good. We're rescheduling and we'll, we'll yeah. get back. So yeah. Well, you like the road life and you can't wait to get back on the road i'm assuming yeah oh yeah yeah i do i really do i mean i miss my family and it's a balance you know i mean yeah. especially when the boys getting older it's uh you know it, it has its challenges but uh, i love my band love being out there with those guys I love seeing you know meet new people playing for great crowds and just playing music you know that's that's what i was born to do that's what god put me here to do and um you know you know how it is when when you're on stage and and you're in your element it's just it's kind of just centering you know for me yeah well speaking of which do you want to play a song for us sure yeah you got anything you want to hear um i mean i love hearing you do ask me how i know but oh. you can play whatever you want yeah let's do that okay <laughs> in this thing right i like there. this i like the all megan request hour this is perfect <laughs> You're stubborn as they come You'll never settle down You'll always be the one Who doesn't stick around You make all the rules You're set in your ways You gotta have your freedom And you gotta have your space But one day you'll meet the girl you swore you'd never find Start feeling things you never felt And spending all your time Trying to figure out How she got this hold on you And when you start to fall You hold to your pride Start building up your walls And never let her get inside And you push her away Cause that's all you know how to do And then she'll leave And you won't play not to go ask me how I know go on and shake your head tell me that I'm wrong say I'm just another fool and this is just another song but I know how you are cause I know how I am I'd give anything to go back and try again. Cause one day you'll meet the girl you swore you'd never find. Start feeling things you never felt. Spending all your time trying to figure out how she got this hold on you. And when you start to fall, you hold on to your pride. You start building up your walls and never let her get inside. And you'll push her away. Cause that's all you know how to do And then she'll leave And you won't beg her not to go Ask me how I know And you 
vives por ti solo Maybe then you won't end up like me. Cause one day you'll meet the girl you swore you'd never find. Start feeling things you never felt. Spending all your time trying to figure out how she got this hold on you. And when you start to fall, you hold on to your proud. Start building up your walls and never let her get inside. Ask me how I know Ask me how I know Cause man I know Yeah All right. Thank you Such a jam every single time Did you know <laughs> Did you know that that was a hit when you wrote it? Uh yeah, kind of. I mean, <laughs> not to sound cocky, I, not like that. I just you know it's special. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You can just tell. I mean, yeah. I've got, I've got a bunch of songs I know are hits, and I got a bunch that I know aren't. You know, yeah. sometimes you do. You just get the, the mojo, and then sometimes you just, you know, you write something that might be solid, but it's not doesn't have the magic. You know. Yeah. Where do you look for inspiration when the well is dry? When the well is dry. Um. You know, for me, because I'm such an overanalyzer and an overthinker and I'm in, in my head so much, Same. I try to do the opposite. I try not to think about anything. I try to just go about my life, get, go do something else, you know, because I feel like when you're living life, that's when great ideas tend to come to you, you know, because um, that, that's, that's where great ideas, you know, that's what makes a great idea is if, if it's real, right? So it's something authentic. It's like, just go out and live and just, just be present, you know, and just be ready for inspiration to hit you at any time. And that's my, that's my way. I mean, I know some people can, you know, I've got a buddy, um, that every morning he gets up and just works on ideas. And I, I admire the crap out of that. I just know that if I did that, I would just overthink and be so uninspired from doing it so much, you know? Yeah. But that's everybody's a little different, I guess. Yeah. Everyone is different. Yep. You maybe want to play us one more song? Sure, yeah. Any uh, any requests at all or just anything? I don't want to pick. I'll let you pick. You've got, I mean, you've got two Garth songs, two more that you can play, or you can play something totally different, something you're excited about, whatever you want. I guess I could play All I Need to See. That was my single yeah. uh, last year that's it's done really well. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Please. But yeah, you should play a Mitch song. We love the Garth stuff, but we want to hear the Mitch stuff too. <laughs> I uh, I love the Gar stuff too, but I just don't sing it as good as he does. So I'm gonna, well, I mean, it's all Mitch stuff, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Ask Me How I Know I feel more comfortable because it's it's you know it's a solo right, but like dive bar and all day long, and that's what cowboys do. They're so Garth, you know, yeah. like they're <laughs> yeah, trying yeah. trying to sing Garth better than Garth is just not it's not a good move, you know. Yeah, but it's a really good problem to have. Like, oh, I can't sing it like him. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I'll take it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is another song I wrote by myself, and uh, it's a song about my wife, but we weren't married at the time. It's pretty cool how it, it all became kind of our, our truth and our life. It's crazy, but it goes like this. Well, I've never seen Venice or slow danced under Paris lights. Never stood by the pyramids or hiked up the Great Divide. Well, I've never been to Times Square to celebrate the New Year, and I've never seen Billy Nelson live. And if I never get to, that's all right. Top in your blue jeans, getting your lipstick on my neck. So if all I do is live in this small town with you, I'll never leave. 
I've seen all I need to see. Well, I've never seen iron in those green hills that roll from miles. But my guess is that they ain't got enough in your green eyes. I've never seen Niagara Falls or stood inside the prison walls where cash recorded life. Some may say I'm missing out, but that's a lie. Cause I've seen you when your song's on and you're singing words that are all wrong and you swear to me that that's how it goes. And I've seen you when tears fall cause the episode that you just saw more than just the show. So if all I do is live in this small town where you will never leave, I've seen all I need to see. you're so insightful you're so kind with your time and to everyone you meet I'm such a fan of what you do I know that things are weird right now but I'm sure you're gonna blow up and hit the road here soon so I hope you'll remember us all little people <laughs> thanks Megan I appreciate it uh, by jamming and jammy absolutely <laughs> thank you so much we'll see you soon absolutely I appreciate you so much <laughs>